All right, what a weekend. We are back from Corpus Christi, Texas, alongside Bernie Neighbors. I'm Jeff McCarriger. On my side. Yeah, now I got you. <laughs> the video <laughs> kept going while you were talking. Oh, did it really? Well, you're like, you started kind of glitch- over. You're kind of glitchy there for a second. So hopefully, it's yeah, how am I now? Good, good, good. All right, cool. Yeah, how you doing? Everything good? Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, it's Wednesday. God, it feels like this week is gone already. I know, right? I mean, yesterday, yesterday, I used yesterday just to kind of catch my breath mm-hmm. and uh, actually played a lot of cornhole in the backyard. And, um, so you're and getting yeah. serious about it, aren't you? You're, you're getting serious about this butterfly grip thing. I am. I, I just, I just want to be able to throw a flat bag and, and throw from 27 feet, hit a couple in, and at least not make a fool of myself. Like I told you before, it's kind of like our golf game. You know, when we go out, I just don't want to be hacking the ball all over the place. I have no intention of being a scratch golfer or even shooting 80. Sure. Just, if, I just can shoot, yeah. if I can shoot 90, I'm, I'm fine with 90. I'd, I'd like to be able to, to flirt with the 80s every once in a while, but at least look like I can like hit a shot every once in a while. Same sure. thing with Pornhole. If I can just spin a flat bag, maybe push a couple of bags. Um, I, I really don't think I'm ever going to learn a roll bag um, as much as I'd love to. I just don't think I have the time. But I at least want to be able to go out and play and, you know, when we have these little breakout games on the side where we're messing around, I'd like to at least yeah. be able to compete a little bit. So, I, don't yeah, know. I just I'm so I'm so different about it. I, I wish I was more like that, actually. It's just I think I'm around the wrong people to try and play because I yeah, I don't think that I should be able to compete there, but I should be able to throw nines and tens. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, and so, and I'm not able to do that. That's, That's pretty good though. I know, but I mean, I think from just athletically speaking, should be able to do that. And I don't, so it's really frustrating. And so I just kind of, instead of being frustrated, I just let it go. That's why I never throw. I don't throw a bad bag actually. It's, I mean, there's times when it looks pretty good if I've, if I've kind of, you know, dialed in, but there's other times it looks like I've never played before. So I don't know if I've ever seen you throw a bag. Yeah, it's not bad. It's real. I mean, it's, as much as I joke about it, it's not that bad. And lately, the last couple of times I've thrown, it's actually much flatter. I throw a better bag left-handed than I throw right-handed. Oh How my! How weird is wow. that? Yeah, so it's, it's, ever... fl- it's flatter. It's flatter. It doesn't it doesn't have a very high spin rate, but it's flat. I mean, it's completely flat. It doesn't have a lot of velocity though. My right hand has has more of the velocity and the spin rate. Is it like Matt guy? Just kind of floats and. No, it's, I mean, no, it's very flat. It just doesn't have a very high spin rate. It's more like uh, Frank Modlin, but a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. A, a little bit more on, a, you know, it's a little bit more like that. It just kind of, it's, it's spinning, but it's not like, you know, Devin Harbaugh, where it's, you know, doing, yeah. you know, six revolutions by the time he gets oh down my there. God. Right? His, his bag's amazing. Yeah. But, uh, but right hand, it's more like that, but it has more of a lean right handed. So I've been trying to get rid of that when I do throw, but yeah, it's a game that you have to, you know, it's all repetition, right? It's all repetition. I think, I think anyone could play this game and if they did deck arounds could get to where they could throw eights and nines in deck arounds. I think it would be very different in competition. And I think that's what gets people. I think, I think a lot of people out there in the world that kind of started playing at their tailgate or whatever, or in their backyard, whatever, right? The first time they play in competition, it's very different. You know what I mean? Like it's it's I sure. mean, unless you're just playing against someone that just wants to put bags in the hole, it's just very and still it's competition. Your mistakes matter. You know, when you're playing with some of your friends or you know, you don't really remember how many you kind of screwed up because everyone's having a beer, they're not really paying attention, no one cares, right? But if you actually played in a tournament, all those things matter and you would realize, Well, I was throwing nines in my deck around and here I am throwing sixes, like, yeah, counts. Yeah. You know, it's just like playing golf. I mean, you talk to people that you know that are scratch golfers and they go play in some amateur tournament and they're like, well, what'd you see? They're like 90. It's like, well, it's like, yeah, it's just different to the cup is different in a tournament setting, you know, and it's. Oh same, my gosh. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. That, yeah. I talk about that in cornhole all the time. One it's of my problems more- is, is, is that I, is that I want to be able to throw it and I'm trying to learn to throw it the right way. Cause you're right. If, if I just messed around and just took the bag and just threw it flat and tr- just tried to hit the board. I, I sometimes I think that might be better, but I'm actually trying to throw it the right way. And to do that takes time. 
And and in the end, I know I'll be rewarded for it, but it takes time and it's a lot. It's all right. You ready? Effort. Yeah. First, first massive tangent of the day. All right. So yeah. kids playing basketball. There is now, you know, the way that they teach little kids to shoot a basketball, they try to teach them proper form first and they bring the goals down. Right. Smaller ball goals are down and they teach them how to do proper form first. Didn't exist when we grew up. Right. That did not happen. So kids my size had to figure out how to get it up there. Right. <laughs> you know, and so form wasn't happening when you're the smallest kid out there just trying to get it up. So you develop awful habits and awful shooting technique. Yeah. And, that, and that's what, you know, in my place. So I wonder, I think sometimes in a game like that, I mean, you look at like the older guys. Not a lot of pretty bags, you know, a lot of forward lean. Matt Guy, one of the greatest, if not the greatest of all time, or well, he is at this point, you know, the bag's not very pretty. It, it is no. not something to watch in the air. But, I mean, they had to learn their own way. Now there, it's almost there is this kind of carbon copy way to do it, and everyone, all the kids kind of adhere to that. And that's why if you were to go watch 25 kids under the age of 25, their bag would look very similar in the air. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that. Yeah. You wouldn't, you know, the ones that have a lean would be the right or left lean. It won't be the front or back lean unless they're throwing an actual rollback. Whereas right. you look at someone like Jimmy McGuffin, you know, he's, his bag has a front tilt on it when, when it comes yeah. down. I mean, it's, it's just yeah. different. It's, it's kind of fun to watch, but yeah, I, I don't know, Jeff. I mean, to your point and the tangent I was making, is that the best way to go about it? You learn how to do it properly and then it's just repetition, repetition, repetition. That's what I'm as, yeah, literally, as opposed to just getting comfortable with what comes out of your hand and then getting better yeah. at that. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it was Jordan Power who first told me, stand 15 feet away and throw a thousand bags. And so that's kind of what I did. I mean, I, I went a little bit further than that. I went about 17, 18 feet. Then I moved back to about 22 feet. And, um, and now I'm probably about 25, 26 feet because, because I went back this weekend. Because here's the deal, right? So everyone's like, yeah, just throw from 15 feet. You know, just throw a bunch of bags each form. So then I go down to Texas and I'm throwing from 20 feet. And then I get all kinds of comments, right? You broadcast this game. You know you can't throw from there. Uh, hey, yeah. character, I don't think I mean, it's, I, it's a feet. process. It's a process, bro. Back <laughs> off my process. <laughs> yeah, you know, it is a but, process. Uh, to make, make so it I went to 27 and all of a sudden I'm throwing the bag all over the place. But I'm, I'm close, though. I'm telling you. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing with, you know, I mean, you played basketball. Like when you get out and start your shooting drills, you're under the basket. You switch two right under the basket. You take two steps back, switch two, take two steps back, switch, you know, and so you, 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 know, you don't just come out jacking threes right away. Right. It's not. It's not good for your eyes. It's not good for your hand. You know that, that's the same kind of thing, right? You, you learn from form, right next. Like you said. Yeah, yeah. You learn right next to the to the board. Take some steps back. Get that honed in. Take some steps back. Get that honed in. So, I uh, I'm with you, man. I just don't. A. I don't have your stick to itiveness as a human being. I don't have that kind of patience. I expect way too much. Yeah, Set myself up to fail. It's kind of my thing. I, I could see that out of your personality, for sure. Because yeah. you know, when we did play, like way back, um, when we first started, like the lifestyle, the tailgating lifestyle brand inside tailgating and all that stuff back in like 2010, yeah. and we did kind of play, I wasn't bad. I could play a little bit, but we played all the time in in the uh, at the office. It was a different office, but we played all the time. So it's you know it's one of those things. If you're athletic enough, you'll you'll figure it out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I wasn't as anywhere near as good as these guys, right? But I mean, seriously, they'd beat me 21 nothing. But I mean, I could play, you know, if I went to a random bar and just kind of hopped in, people were like, oh, that guy's pretty decent. You know what I mean? Yeah. But and now, that's the thing, like the guy, the guys here in Charleston, I mean, the guys who have the, the club down here in Charleston, mm -hmm. they've reached out, out to me and want me to come and play. And I'd love to do that, but I'm not going to go and just start throwing bags all over the place. So again, I that's know. why I really want to at least show up and at least be able to hit the damn board and slide a couple in every once in a while. Because you because you get what's coming. You know exactly what's going to be said the moment you start playing poorly. Man, you're around it all the time. How can you be like you don't want to hear that? You know, because it'll pressure, be the very but... first thing. Yeah, you represent yeah. something, right? Yeah. I mean, look, even though even though even though football announcers, you yeah. know, play by play guys don't play football. Many of them didn't ever play football. Um, same, well, same thing with, with baseball play by play announcers, but in cornhole, I just feel like if you're going to, and I kind of feel like it's that way in golf too. Like if you're going to broadcast it, I feel like you need to play it because you learn the nuances, you learn the strategy a little bit better. And again, Nate Voyer has been a huge help for me 
um, you know, with just some of the strategy, the strategy stuff. And uh, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just been, I think, I think it's helpful for you as a broadcaster to kind of learn how to play a little bit. So Let's plus, be plus you learn that, plus you learn the struggle. Misha right. and I talked about this. It's like in baseball, like, and you know, this in baseball, it is, it is humiliating to strike out in baseball. Right. And mm-hmm. I think you have to learn the pain as a baseball player. Like, you know, if, if you haven't played the game and you see somebody strike out, you're just like, oh, okay, what a bum. He strikes out again. As a player, you don't know how deflating that is. When you're up there, you swing and miss. Someone has tricked you. They have struck you out. And you walk back to the dugout and you have to look at your teammates who don't even want to make eye contact with you. Yeah. It's humiliating. And yeah. you don't, if, if you haven't played the game, you don't know what that, you don't know what that's like and how you have to overcome that and be mentally tough. Same thing in cornhole. I think if you learn the struggles, because it's hard, it's hard to play at a high level. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. It just kind of helps you. I First off, all play by play guys never played sports beyond, you know, church basketball. Yeah. Right. It's like, no. much true, yeah. <laughs> and if they did never got past high school. Yeah. The color commentator, however, is usually someone from that world, and that and that's yeah. great. But I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, like, well, what, wait a minute. Well, Jim Nance played. Uh, didn't he play college golf at Houston with Fred Couples? I think he did. Guys? That's what. That's what I think. I think he did play a little bit of golf. Yeah, but but yeah. most 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 play about most. Players, you're right. Most. Don't. But, well, they're sports nerds. You know, they're like me. They're like like they love all sports, but they're like five seven, 130 pounds. It's not like even if they wanted to play, it's not like anyone's going to take them, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's tough, but, uh, I don't know, man, I don't know if I've got the stick to to learn to be as good as I think I could be at it. Because I think, you know, if, if you did what, like, you know, you told the Jamie Graham story for a couple of years there that he said, all right, I'm going to give myself a year yeah. and see how good I can get at this. I mean, I think if we did that, we would be pretty good, but oh, that's, yeah. That's, yeah, that's because you're athletic. I mean, going back to what you were saying, you're athletic. That's I, this, I know you can do it. That's this game, though. I think anyone can be really good at this game, but it's remarkably difficult to be, you know, elite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's the same with, I don't know, a, a ton of other sports, right? I mean, and, and especially a ton of other niche sports like ours, like bowling. I think you could, mm. uh, the average, you know, a, a decent athlete spent some time could be a pretty good bowler. But to do what they do on the professional level is a whole other thing, right? Yeah. Pool being another one like that. Um, I think I think you have to have certain gifts to play football, basketball, baseball at a high level. You know, and, and talking about baseball, you know what's the most impressive? The most impressive thing about guys, and, you, and I even saw this in high school, were the guys that understood, I'm going to get out more than I'm safe. For I'm sure. going to be out more like in high school if you're great then you start getting over 400 close to 500 right so you're you're kind of one for two but still the under like the understanding they have like ah that's the game whereas someone like me would just be like throwing bats and just like so <laughs> upset right? Yeah, yeah right and like i had this one friend that was just he's really good played in college and he's just eh, you know got me like if he struck out he hey got me you know it happens it's like yeah. I was like, I would just, I would, even at 16, 17, be like, wow, I'll never be like that. <laughs> That's so upsetting. <laughs> that I'll never have that kind of emotional IQ. <laughs> yeah, you do get, you do, you get upset. <laughs> I don't, you know why? I mean, we could talk about this. I mean, we can, we, hey, this is our show today. Are we going to tell everyone this is our show today? That's right. Just you and me today. Yeah. We don't want to, we so, don't want to bug anyone. So either. buckle up for these kind of stories for the next hour. But I, you know, I just, I don't, know, I don't even know where I was going. I'll let you talk for a you're while. You're talking about I, why I, you're like, why you're, why you are. The I, 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 I don't yell at people. I don't get mad at people. And I find ways, you know, I, I think I've got some issues and I, and I find some really petty ways to let all that stuff out. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I yell at a TV screen when I'm watching Carolina play. Right. I, I yell at myself when I play golf. I, you know, these are ways I get all that stuff out, but I don't yell at people. Yeah. I don't, I don't. So you yell at yourself instead. That makes sense. Yeah, it's better me than someone That's else, very, man. Yeah, it's very deep. I think. Yeah, I think there's probably, in, in all honesty, I think there's probably a lot of truth to that. You beat yourself up because you're right. You don't take it out on other people, so yeah, you I take mean, it out on yourself. Sure, I can take it. No, I think it's seriously. I think I think yeah. there's something to that. That was a nice tender moment. That was. That was. That was a uh, behind. That was a meet Jeff and Bernie moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure it was. We got to bring that back. I was thinking about that on the plane. We got to bring that back. Uh, which, which plane? Which plane ride? 
Yeah, shout out to everyone on that. Uh, what what was that? The twelve twenty one out of yes. Corpus Christi that was more than half full with uh, cornhole players. That was awesome. Yeah, that was that was great. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's a funny story. So um, I got upgraded, as you saw. Uh, yeah, seat one A, seat one A. Man, look at that's that guy. A, just, just, to, just to clarify <laughs> everything, I didn't, I didn't purchase that seat. It was, it was an upgrade from American. Um, I and I and honestly, I wish you had a choice because I actually liked where I had my seat back further because it was. I like to sit by the window, and I think I had like nine F, which is a fine seat. You get extra leg room. It you've was been great. Right, you've been right and, in front and, of Michelle and. Uh, and Nick, if you were in that seat, oh, they so, were in t- so, they were in ten. Yeah, yeah. So, so well for me, that would have been a better seat. I don't know. It would have been unfortunate for them, maybe. But, <laughs> but anyway, so so they upgraded me without asking. And and honestly, you know who used Bobby Cremens used to because uh, they would always anytime we would travel with him in basketball, they would try to upgrade him, and mm-hmm. he would always give it to either a player or he'd give it to a military veteran. And I and I thought that, that was a great idea. And this would have been a case where I I, I would have done the same thing. I'd rather have given it up. But anyway. So, so I'm sitting literally in one D. So it's, it's the seat that everyone sees when they first walk on the board. Oh, there he was. Yeah. So, you know, you got a board first. So you just sit there and you watch every single person. He had a martini in hand. He had legs crossed, martini in hand, just, just shaking his head at us that that walked into the back. Yeah, but that's not really part of the story. (laughs) (laughs) Not not really relevant to the story. (laughs) the fact is that I was sitting there, and, and it's awful because you have to be judged by all 210 people on board that flight as they're, I, as they're walking in. So, but here's the funny part, right? So, all the comments, right? But, but uh, like from Miranda and from Lori, right, and and, uh, and and some of the other players. But then, but then the string of younger players, and more importantly, younger staff members underneath Trey Ryder start boarding. Mm-hmm. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. I'm like, <laughs> and then and then another. Hey, Dad. I'm, I'm like, hey. That that, that contest team is something you, else, you, man. And so, so I started giving it back to him. I'm 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 like, you kids better be careful back there. Like, I don't want to have to come back there, right? Yeah. So I start making dad jokes back at them. So this lady who's sitting next to me, she, sweet sweet lady, she she just kind of touches me on the leg, and she's like, I'm so sorry to interrupt you she's like are you a coach or something and and i just i just died laughing i'm like yeah i, I said i didn't even think about that you're probably thinking i'm a, i'm i'm either a coach or i'm somebody who has a lot of kids uh, like, uh, yeah. sitting in the back of this plane yeah no, that, yeah, that's so that, funny so that that now has become the unfortunate running joke with everyone in the acl younger than me hey dad hey dad hey dad, hey, dad. Hey, you've, dad. Got, you've got some paternal qualities jeff you, 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 well, that's because i got a bunch of kids yeah i mean you tell dad jokes you kind of look the part, you know, you're, you're dad. I guess. So. <laughs> Is this dad, am I wearing a dad shirt today? I'm like, I'm like the drunken uncle. <laughs> you are the drunk uncle. I, I, I want to be the drunk uncle. Drunkle. No, I, you know, I've been pretty good recently until the last night in Corpus. Kind of yeah. let loose a little bit. That was rough. We, yeah. Oh. I, I exited stage right on you guys. I could see that going downhill quick. <laughs> I, pull, I pulled a Bernie. Yeah, you, see, are, you, what... you, you are the, you are the king. I mean, you are the one who taught me how to do it as well as I did. On what was that Sunday night? Yeah, Sunday night. Yeah, like like because because you are the king. Is, is it called the Irish exit? Is that the Irish the Irish goodbye? Yeah, yeah. It's just all of a sudden, like literally, almost in mid conversation, we'll look around and Bernie's just gone. Where do you? Just gone. And, and 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 no one really even says where did he go because we all know he's just he that, that's Bernie he'll just sneak out. Just, so on Sunday I was exhausted, man, and and yeah. we had we had had a nice meal, and so you guys took a left, I took a hard right, went down the escalator, and away I went. Yeah, I just Oof. I I know where it comes from if you start telling everybody goodbye, right? If I do, you know, if it's someone else, they're like, all right, see ya. If it's me, I'm like, what is your problem? What are you and like? I just. I don't have time for that 15 minute argument. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, where are you going? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, ah, tired, man. Calling, going to the, the yeah, all that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm good. I don't need that. So I find a way to, it's like that meme, that Homer Simpson meme where he kind of fades into the bushes. Have you seen that online? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, yes, that's that pretty is, much that's what I do. Mean. Like people are talking, yes. I just kind of find yeah. a way to just kind of vanish. Yeah. But unfortunately, Sunday night, I stayed to the end. So that was bad. Yeah. That was rough. Um, so I asked you earlier, you didn't ask me, you like my shirt? 
I love this shirt. Part of our new, I was jealous. I want one of those. What? Yeah, so is that black and gray? Yeah, with, with, with the red, red outline. Ah, I like that a lot. I like the I like the old baseball three quarter shirts, man. Those are pretty cool. We should bring too. those back as a fashion statement. I always liked those as a kid. Do I really tell dad jokes? By the way, no, not really, not really. Just giving you a hard time. I'm wondering if I do. Now I'm going to be self conscious. I'm going to show up to the next event. I'm... I don't think you're not really a joke teller. I mean, you're a very jovial person, but I don't. You're not like the. Maybe I'll wear. Maybe I'll wear. Like nice you know, stuff. you're not doing the your mom jokes quite the way that we are. You know, every now and then you'll do it just to. Have... <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, I have a zinger. I got Trey pretty good this past weekend. Even even Trey was even Trey was. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it was something. It wasn't even really that great, but it was something like. We were sitting there just before the broadcast. He's, he's like, you know what's funny? I'm like, your mom? He's like, oh, yeah, I got him. Yeah, <laughs> it like, still like, works every day. Yeah, yeah. You can't get away from me, your mom, Joe. They're the best. All right, speaking of this weekend, because, we, I mean, mm. you and I, could, we could literally rant probably for five hours. Yeah. Um, we got to get we got to get to this weekend, at least make this somewhat <laughs> topical. And, and actually, I think you do have some topics that you want to bring up. But uh, I, I would love, I would love, to, I don't know if you've had a chance to, I mean, we're, we're on Wednesday. I haven't really had a chance to decompress too much. I tried to dig into some of the stats with the teams and some of the singles play. I couldn't tell if it was updated or not, but uh, I would, I would, I, I can't wait to get like the overall thoughts of, of everybody. But I got to tell you, Bernie, like, you, you know, I've been on my soapbox for a while about the, you know, sticky game, sure. the, the defensive game. Mm-hmm. Um, 30 game versus versus the off, you know, offense versus defense, basically. Right. And, 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 you know, I was, I was very honest about it and I was worried about it. And going into this weekend, um, you know, I, I, I was really looking forward to seeing what we were going to see from the players. And I was blown away about the level of play. I don't know about you. I mean, you spent hours on those, on those uh, stream live reports. stream courts. So, I mean, yeah. you got a chance to see a lot of players. Um, I spent some time on, on the live stream as well, not as much as you, and obviously on the broadcast. But the level of play, I think what I was concerned with, and again, with all due respect to Tony Smith and Eric Davis, they are, they are great players in their own right. But if the game turned into Eric Davis and Tony Smith exclusively, I was going to be really concerned, right? Because mm-hmm. that's just a dirty, truly a dirty defensive style game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's not what I saw. I don't know if that's what you saw. I'm not I'm interested to get get your thoughts on it, but overall, um, I saw, I really saw both games, which is perfect. I saw the slide game. I saw offensive shots. I saw. Remember, remember what I said. I I, I want to be able to watch cornhole and see something I can't do at home. And all yeah. weekend, I was like, "Damn it, this is good." <laughs> I mean, yeah. this this is really good. I mean, they were hitting shot, but they're hitting slide shots in it. It's almost like the defensive game was was just used as kind of a momentum breaker. It, it was kind of just used as a bullet if you needed it, right? Yep. And 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 they would start, you know, and and every once in a while, yeah, there'd be a, a, a first, you know, a first shot block, but not very often. It seemed like I was seeing a lot of bags in. And then all of a sudden they'd be like, okay, you know what? Let's switch it up a little bit. It's like a changeup in, in baseball. We use baseball yeah. analogies all the time. It was a total changeup. You know, first first two first two two bags in for each player. Then all of a sudden we get fun, right? And now all of a sudden the board gets a little dirty there for the final couple of bags. Sure. And man, that was that was so much fun to watch. I thought the level of play was so high. It was incredible. And and I and I think that I and and I don't know. I feel like every time I drop a, a stat on the broadcast. Uh, either Anthony or Trey poo poo it because it seems like you can. I, it it kind of frustrates me at times to be honest with you, because it's like watching a news channel now. You you can spin stats however you want. Sometimes a nine point five PPR is good. Sometimes it sucks. Sometimes sometimes a you know a, a one DPR is great. And then as soon as I say, oh this guy you know, has a DPR of of point nine, and then and then someone's like, yeah, but yeah, but look who they played. Okay, fine. Sure. But overall, I, I saw a tweet from Trey. That the uh, the overall PPR I think was the highest it's ever been at a national, and that yep. doesn't surprise me because I thought the level play was so extremely high that not only did I feel like more bags were going in, but they're also hitting more difficult shots. The roll bags now are really starting to fall in at a very high rate, and that was just, you know, be great. It's it's a pro sport. I want to see greatness. I want to see something that that I can't do at home, obviously. And and I did. I, the the players, all of them, were incredible. I, th- I thought it was an amazing weekend to watch Cornell. 
Yeah, if you really want to, you know, to, to your point, the, t the two finalists in singles are exactly what you're talking about. And what was amazing about it, and we've already, you know, Jeff, we're kind of, you know, we are the foresight of the game. We talked about on this show, you and I having this conversation that the future of the game, five tool players. Yeah. That's where we're going. Justin Burton Jr. and uh, Devin Harbaugh, five tool guys. Yeah. But what they do especially, is they especially slide. Especially JBJ. J they JBJ slide, more than, De than yeah, Devin yeah. probably. They slide, slide, slide. I Now I need to score. Slide, slide. It's almost, in, in a way, if you want to make it a basketball analogy, it's like a coach saying, all right, we've been playing man. We're going to go one three one trap zone. Yes. Real quick. Yes. You know, you're going you're to switch up defenses. I'm going to do something to get you off balance, to get you out of your rhythm. I, you know, the, the level of play that you're talking about, Devin Harbaugh on Friday and singles on the floor to get to the broadcast, to, to be, he had to beat Matt Guy to win his bracket. Matt Guy played through a 10-5-3 PPR, which is pretty way up there. He threw like a 10-8 for the entire tournament. So that's just mind boggling. I saw that, yeah. But a 10-5-3, which is unbelievably good if you want to, you know, out of 12, right? So 10-5-3 of the 17 rounds, 10 of them were four baggers, and he did not score a point. Hmm. It, it's not that he lost throwing that. He didn't score a point. That's how well Devin Harbaugh threw in that last match. 66 of 68 bags. And it wasn't just a slide fest. I saw him, the, the greatest collect I've probably ever seen live, where he was inside arm having to go out, get one bag, bring it over, get the other bag in front of the hole, taking all three. And it was, it was insane, man. It was insane. Matt Guy, Matt Guy did that? No, Devin did oh, that. De I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that, but yeah. he was having to hit shots. Like he, yeah. Matt, Matt's sitting there staring at four. Matt's in. You know, Matt, Matt's staring at a four. And Devin somehow comes up with the craziest collect you've ever seen in your life. And it was just – and everyone that was around – literally, these are professionals, by the way, that are around watching this. They start laughing. It wasn't like, oh, a cheer. It was just like the loudest bunch of laughter because it's like that's the craziest thing you'll ever – like that's impossible. And he's been doing it all day. Now, we'll get into here in a second another thing about Devin that was really unfortunate. But, yeah, the level of play and the fact that – all right, so – you know, getting a, a young 14-year-old on the broadcast was awesome, but his level yeah. of play all day, because I was actually on, I was in that, I, I was doing that bracket most of the day. Another five-tool kid. I mean, they can all roll if they want to, but they don't just stick with it. They can all block and play that game if they want to, but they don't just stay there. I mean, I think sometimes, and maybe, you know what, Jeff? I think it's our conversation about it. that's changed the game. That's what I'm, I'm that's my story. I'm sticking to it because, We've all talked about you've got to be able to fill it up yeah. and still play this other game. And now they're doing it. And you watch Justin Burton Jr. If he wanted to make 30 bags in a row, he could have. Yes. But every now and then, all right, here's the block. We've been we've been doing this. You're you, you know, you you're in this rhythm now. Now I'm gonna stop your rhythm. Now I'm gonna make you adjust. Now you're gonna play the game the way I want to play it this round. And the which and goes I, perfect to your bat. Sorry to interrupt. It goes perfect yeah. to your basketball analogy. I think that's yes. so good. You're just kind of you're just kind of exchanging shots, exchanging threes, hitting some jumpers, going down low. You kind of feel each other out for the first, you know, five, ten yeah. minutes of the game. And then what do you do as a coach? You switch your defense. Switch your you defense to, on it. Yeah, just a little, just you, you don't fall in love with it. But just switch it up every once in a while. That's a great yeah, you're going to come back out of it in a, in a few possessions, right? You're not going to stay with this one. And, you know, at, you're going to stay with it if day, it works. Yeah. At the end of the day, what do you have to do? You have to freaking score. You yeah. have to score. So you still have to hit those slide games. You still have to hit the. You still have to hit the shots. You I still mean, need the slide. You still need the push. Yeah, you know? I mean, one one of the things that we still see, which is kind of, it, and it's just this. It's called the fourth bag block, and it's kind of a joke in the cornhole community. If you're yeah. if you're not a diehard. Uh, cornhole fan like we are useful. it's just you've got the last you've got useful <laughs> you got the last bag and you just leave it short there's nothing in your way and it's just as if you're not you, you kind of stop focusing for that one second and you leave it short and you know there's still too much of that uh but i you know certain people like I mean, Dylan Turpin's airmail was just insane <laughs> all day. I mean, it, there, there it were a just, couple. There were a couple of games he had. A, he had a PPR of over eleven, right? I yeah. mean, he was incredible. Uh, Derek Holland, his game was insane. Obviously, Alex Rawls was playing really well in our bracket. Just ran into, uh, you know, just just ran into the wrong gore at the wrong time. 
Yeah. Right. And Jacob was just playing so, so well. And he just, we talked about it on ACL live and I'm not sure what time that shows. So that'll probably already, he was so controlled because his, you know, the, they were called the twin terrors for a reason. I mean, they could get loud, they could get, you know, and, and, and offensively loud and offensively abrasive when they played and people really didn't like it. And they weren't the most well-liked kids for a while there but he was so composed and so controlled all day, even on the broadcast, even when things kind of started going against him. Now you could, he started playing too fast. You could tell he was getting kind of For wound sure. up, yeah. but you know, he, you weren't seeing the emotional outburst and, and a lot of the chatter that you get sometimes from Jake. And I, to be honest, I was kind of hoping we got a little bit more of it, especially he was on that, that run to go out 17 to two. I was kind of, I was kind of wanting some of it because the kid can show, I mean, you know, you saw his, uh, his Twitter handle, right? Jay Hollywood, no, it's like oh, Jay something Hollywood. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. He he called himself in his in his feature on the broadcast. Yeah. Uh, he referred to himself as Hollywood. Yeah, he's he's he's. I'm fine with that. I like it. Give it give it all, you know. But he, yeah. I like the fact that he was controlled, and that you know, give me all of your emotion to yourself and to the crowd. You want to give? You want to do that? Do all that. You know, it was. They would sometimes get a little chirpy with the opponent, which is okay. You know, it's professional sport but it would cross the line sometimes. And, you know, you're a child. It's not like an adult can do anything about it. And that's the part I don't like, you know, it's, it's not okay to chirp when you're a 13, 12, 13 year old to an adult and they can't physically do anything about it. Right. You want to chirp as adults to each other. Be careful who you're chirping to something. You know what I mean? You're, you're going to know there's certain people you can talk to and how you can talk to them where a kid can just get away with it because what adults going <laughs> to smack him around after them. You, you know what I mean? Like you're not going to do it. But he was so composed, and yeah, he was. And when Devin finally found the range, and we can talk about Devin's bag issues if you'd like, because I I think it's something that needs to be addressed. But yeah, just, I'm, just I'm, I'm, real quick before we get to that, yeah. um, just just before I forget, because I know for sure I will, because you were talking about uh, Devin Harbaugh and his journey and having to beat Matt Guy. Um, th this is, and, and actually, you know what, maybe you want to talk about the TV so we can, we can dive into this a little bit more later. One, one thing that I'd like to do on the TV side that I think would be cool. I think we need to start putting the bracket up because, because like you said, yeah. Devin Harbaugh had to beat Matt guy. That would be something significant to show. Like if we just did a graphic, just a quick full screen graphic, Hey, you know, behind the scenes, here's what Devin Harbaugh, you know, the, uh, these players have been going through qualifying for the last sure. two days with doubles and singles on the single side. Here's what Devin Harbaugh had to endure for six hours, you know, qualifying just to get here. All of a sudden, we do a, a full screen graphic of yeah. that bracket. I, I can't remember what bracket he was in, ABCD, whatever. And it shows his journey and who he had to be. And you'd see that he had to beat Matt Guy because I made a couple of notes on my, uh, after the broadcast, just on my scratch pad here. Like, oh, Jacob, I mean, to your point, he had to beat, um, he had to beat yeah. Jamie Graham early in the day, mm -hmm. got past Jamie Graham. To stay in the winners bracket, and then and then had to beat Alex Rawls not once but twice, yeah. And same and same thing uh, with with uh, Justin Burton Jr. He had to beat Mark Richards not no, no, only he, not only once for the king seat had to beat him again. Yeah, and then Mark beat him badly in the first game first for one, the yeah. final because he was sitting for so long, and that's something else that happens when you do so well in the in the winners bracket. You do have to wait. Like there's going to be a time where you have to wait regardless. And yeah. we we were actually talking about this on the live stream. Would you rather? rather wait early or yeah. wait late, you know, because yeah, waiting late they... is a thing, but don't, but don't you think to my point, don't you think it'd be kind of cool to see like, a few awesome. like I here, think... here, here, here was his journey yesterday during qualifying. And you could see, cause it, it would also give us something to talk about because on these first to 21, as you well know, uh, it's a little bit like calling a baseball game. There's it's a cool. lot of downtime. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of things to talk about. So if we could just take a full screen on their journey and that bracket, uh, that would have been fun to talk about because it, it's not like it's not like it was a fluke to get to the final four and and to the broadcast. I mean, there were some big names that fell because that, that was another thing. I, I don't I don't feel and Trey and I talked about this on the broadcast a little bit, but I would have liked to have hit it more again, maybe with these with these type of graphics. But it's not like it's not like, in my opinion, anyway, it's not like the top players um, had a bad day. I mean, right. you know, th th they right. they really played well. I mean, they really yeah. most most of the top, you know, who we would consider elite top players, they they most of them seemed to make a really good run. So, I mean, there were some sure. big names that dropped to get to this final four. Yeah, because you know, we'll you know, someone like me will make a comment. Well, they're just not where they used to be. It's like, yeah, but they were in the bracket final. 
<laughs> you know, I mean, they're right there. You just they're don't see good. it. It's almost as if like we're watching the NCAA tournament and you're like, yeah, we're all the one seeds. Well, they lost in the regional final. It's not that they didn't play well. They just exactly. lost in the Elite Eight. You know, they're right there. Yeah. And you know, which would be a great lot to that. show. They'd be yes. good. That, that's another, another another good example that we see it all the time in the NCAA tournament. And yeah. it kind of makes you appreciate the journey and who they had to go through. Um, yeah, that's that's another. Especially the guys that come out of the losers bracket or the elimination yeah. bracket, as they like to call it. If you have to go down and then play all the way back through that, and then you have to beat <sighs> the person that won the winners bracket twice. I mean, that's that that that's quite a journey, right? Yeah. And so it's uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. I I think they probably should maybe see if they can carve out some time for the brackets, and then it's it's a matter of how do you get through the brackets, and you have to talk through them quickly, blah blah blah. But no, I I'm with you. I think it'd be great because it's not like they just randomly appeared, right? <laughs> you know exactly. what I mean? Yeah, no, they 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 took down some some big names on their way. Hey, two more things on the singles, and then let's let's go on to uh, um, let's go on to teams i really want to hit teams with you also yes. because that was that was that was a ton of fun and i know we're going to run out of time we got like 10 minutes left isn't that crazy um yeah so let's talk about the harbaugh situation one more thing though to wrap up the sitting um i mean that that is an issue and, and there's nothing that we can do about that i don't think anyway um it's very it's very unique to this sport um the only other thing i can think about that that would be like that um and and this is I mean, this is just in youth sports because my kids swam when they were younger. A couple of them did. And swimming, you will swim a couple of events, and then you have to wait for everyone else to catch up. So the kids would swim, right? Two or three events, they do really well, and now you got to sit for like an hour, hour and fifteen yep. minutes before your next before your next uh, uh, competition, and then you swim again, and you know you're in and out of the pool, and it's it's tough to stay mentally there. And uh, I can't I can't think of though a professional sport, and you and I kind of talked about this this weekend a little bit where you would have that dynamic. But like Tanner Halbert was was a was a perfect example. I talked to Tanner. I think Tanner lost his first game. So right away had to go to the elimination bracket, right? Mm -hmm. And he is grinding his way back. I think he won five straight, then all of a sudden had to sit and sat for like, I can't remember how long he told me, hour and 15 minutes, something like that, and then lost. Yeah. You know, it's tough. Like like and you said to me, it's tough, but it's it's well, a Justin dynamic Jr. you have to deal with. With Mark Richards, he gets all the way through. He wins the keen seat, as it's called in our sport. Mark Richards comes back through the elimination bracket, and apparently in the first game of that final, just, just rolled right through him because, he, you know, yeah. JBJ had been sitting for so long. But then once he kind of found the rhythm again after, you know, being in game situation again, then he was able to take Mark out. Now, it's just the way the brackets work and the number of people playing, there's going to be a weight in there. Now, I don't know exactly how they can spread that out because the yeah. obviously the winner's bracket doesn't take very long. You can get through a winner's bracket pretty quick. But with everyone else losing, now they all have to play against each other, and then you know it, it just it takes jam. a it, it takes a while. And uh, back up on the golf course. Yep, that's what it is. And you, and there's you know only so many <laughs> to an boards. Extreme level. <laughs> yeah, and then you've only got so many boards and everyone playing, and you're trying to get matches over to the streaming courts for everything to stay live, and they want to see the winners bracket games. So yeah. it's 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 a mess. But you know there's going to be a wait somewhere. And I you know now the discussion is do we make people wait early? The thing is, if you make them wait early, they're going to have to wait again anyway. So now you're waiting twice yeah. instead of once, and it's it's. I don't think there's anything you do. I think I think I think as a player, it's just one of those things you have to adjust to, and yeah. whatever 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 helps you. Um, if you want to just keep playing on a side, you know, on a, on a side court, and just keep playing yeah. to stay loose. If you want to go take a break, I mean, different players are going to have to do different things to figure out how to keep themselves in it, so to speak, for and, for that. And I that can't and I can't believe we still have to talk about this, Jeff. And Devin Harbaugh is one of my favorite players. I've had him number one in the world this season. I think he's just a different guy. He's playing yeah. on a different level. But you know, if you want to tell the story, great, but he had to switch bags due to seeding. The way the seeding worked out, he was the lower seed in the semifinal and the final, which means the other person playing gets to choose bag color and the bags they want to play. And you can't have the same color. The networks just won't allow. Right. So we, yeah. we can't for, throw for it out. I, I know he, most people you, just real quick for, for anyone who's listening to this podcast who doesn't really know the game. There, there are a few. Dude, there's a ton of so, people out there, Jeff, that love cornhole that don't understand why that exists, why we have yeah. that bag policy. Yeah. And, and I'd, I'd like to talk about this a little bit more on the broadcast. Um, but we can talk about that some other time, too. But okay. um, I think sometimes in the broadcast, they 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 don't like to get into the minutia. I don't think so much of the game, but I, I yeah. kind of disagree with that. I think we do need to get into that because it's just a tried and true uh, rule in broadcasting 
you have to remember what your audience is. This is a nationally televised game. And we are mm-hmm. we are broadcast as much as we love to think that everyone knows our sport and loves our sport and follows it and plays it. That ain't true. So sometimes yeah. you have to tell them basic things like this. So for anyone who doesn't know, if Bernie and I end up on a broadcast court together and he's the number one ranked player, I'm the number two ranked player, and we're both playing with, with blue and gray BG Wizards, um, but what, someone's got to change. So since because because it's terrible on TV, it, I know that sounds vain as a sport, but we want the people who are watching on TV to enjoy what they're watching. And I remember I was so frustrated when I first started in this game because people would have pink bags and maybe kind of a pale orange on TV yeah. looks the same. Right. Somebody's got to change because otherwise at home, people can't figure it out. And if they can't figure it out at home, you know what's going to happen? They're going to switch the damn channel. No one's going right. to watch. Exactly. So you have to have stark contrast in the bag so people know what the hell they're watching. Yep. Um, sorry, I don't want to get off on this too no, much. No, but anyway, no, so, no, because no. because in our, in our scenario, since Bernie is the is the number one C, Bernie gets to choose. Hey, I want to keep my blue BG Wizards. You got to change. So yep. this is what happened to Devin. Just because it's early in the season, there were no rankings. They had to go through routers and, and Jake, everything to do and, that. And Jake knew that. Jake Jake Gore yeah. made that call. He was like, he's been playing this gray color. Well, I'm going to play the grays that I have. This is not a new rule. This has been around for three or four years now. This is yeah. not new. We have stressed upon stressed upon stress to the pros. You can have the, it's the same bag, it's the same series. The makers will give you as many colors of that as you want. Get two or three that you're comfortable with. Didn't do that. Only had one. And once he was forced to switch, he actually literally had to go and find other people's bags. And yeah, he was playing with Ryan bags. Windsor's bags the second time. And so happened. imagine you've played with something all day. Now you have to switch. And to his credit. He got behind in both matches because I think he was still getting used to the to the exact feel that he wanted. He yeah. came back in both matches once he got that. But, you know, he just got too far down to Justin Burton Jr. and he, he couldn't quite get all the way back. And I love Devin Harbaugh. I do. I love him to death. But guys, girls out there, you have to have two colors, maybe even three. You have to. And, and quite frankly, for the other players to say, well, I'm playing this color. I mean, and Jacob, I think, if, if I hear the story correctly – chose that color to just to absolutely force uh Devin to change because to change interesting because he had other colors himself he could have played something else if he wanted to but it was his yeah. choice because he was the higher seed due to rounders and he forced him to switch I, that I mean that's gamesmanship but that's yeah why not I mean I did, and the fact that you don't have something else of a different color it's the same bag so I think you have to go to one tournament play one color you know that you can't like you have to find a way to get them get them broken in the same and i understand that's the the issue you know a brand new bag of a even if it's the same series isn't the same as one you've been playing with for four months i get that but you you have to find a way to break them in and to have them be as similar as possible right i mean you have to yep. tennis players go out there with 10 rackets if not more in pro yeah, tennis. If, if something happens to one boom they got their they got their other now one. they're not made to switch rackets by another but it's it's irrelevant you should have and, and, and yeah it's breaking, too breaking bad. a couple different sets yeah and I, and I felt bad for Devin because I don't we didn't get Devin Harbaugh on Friday you know on Saturday night that we saw all day on Friday as well as he played we he wasn't the same guy and so you know I I, I feel bad for him in a way but it's like you've got to do that look the networks aren't going to let us got have two people out there with gray bags they, they're not going to allow Yep. We can't do it. But let's put a cap on this so we can have time to yep. talk about teams. Um, sure. To Devin's credit, as soon as we left that night, who was the first person you and I saw in the parking garage? He's a great, he's, he's a great guy. That's Devin what I Harbaugh I love that guy. Didn't, didn't, didn't utter one word of negativity. Not one word. As a matter of fact, the first thing he said to to us was, hey, great job on the broadcast. Yeah. You know, I mean, that was the first thing that he talked about because apparently someone had, had – He's a great guy, man. Here. He's a yeah, really cool the, dude. He's a really yeah. cool dude. So I and hate can, that I'm saying anything that, and I don't really mean. And to we say even tried to bring it up. You know that yeah. it was unfortunate, and he didn't. I mean, he just wasn't going to go down that road. He, yeah, shrugged. No yeah. excuses. He he was great. He was great. But all right, teams. We got like five minutes left. Um, <laughs> damn it, Bernie. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I told Trey in the car. I was just kind of shaking my head. I was beyond excited and pleased um, with the team's broadcast. Um, so damn exciting. 16 teams. Again, if you, if you didn't follow this weekend, Cornhole now has a team series, teams division. So 16 teams from 16 different regions, 16 different players. 
Um, we had we had uh, Ohio on the broadcast this weekend. We had Ohio, Texas, uh, the Carolina Coasters, and Missouri Mays. So those those were our our two um, teams broadcast. But man, was it good! I don't I don't know. I so I'm out. I'm like, I don't know what it is, but it's something, man. It's something. And and can it be the future of the sport? It could be, Bernie. Yep. I, mean, I don't know what your opinion was, but I thought it was fantastic. It had everything that we love about sports and about teams in it. You know, I mean, it, it really, it, it really yeah. was fun to watch. My only complaint, just real quick, my only complaint is, um, so there are 16 people, as most of you know who are watching, 16 people on the roster, but there are only seven games, right? So you need 14 players. That's done. It, it was a great call, right? Just in case all 16 don't make it, a couple right. of people are sick, hurt, whatever. Um, you, you, you know, you, you got four teams, you have seven matches. So each, each, uh, each game is a best of seven. Problem is on the broadcast, we show all seven, right? Come hell or high water, we show all seven. And unfortunately with both, they got to four pretty early, right? So now right. you've got two or three matches left and you're like, ah, what are well, we those playing? Those matches are, they, they are playing for money. Yeah. yeah money, money and, and Trey, Trey was also talking about this and maybe yeah. this needs to be to explain to the players and, and they, and they might tweak it and we might. Um, bring it up and maybe do a graphic on the broadcast about it. But these games still do matter. Also, I believe for the playoffs and for point standings, yes. like if there are tiebreakers and that kind of stuff, they're yep. looking at total wins. Yep. And like you said, Absolutely. money too. So, so all the games are played out, but on TV, I'd like, I'd like to, I don't know. And I don't know how we do it, but yeah, again, overall, overall, man, I thought it was fun. I mean, what, what were your guys overall? I love it. I love it. I got, I'm still working on, you know, trying to explain to whomever will talk with me about it, you know, to get all the buy-in. I think the buy-in's better this year from the pros for it, but I, I wish it was 100%. Yeah. And I'm surprised that we're not getting buy-in from some of your mid-level and lower-level pros because you're not ever probably going to make a broadcast, but you're going right. to on teams, right? Like, I think they would be the most excited about this because this Absolutely. is going to be their opportunity to get on national television at some point this year because if we're all being honest, it's probably not through singles and doubles. No, if you're the if you're the 115th ranked player, right. you're probably not getting on a national broadcast, right? Except for through teams, right? And so I think there should be an immense amount of buy-in. You know, like California Slingers, not many people had them very high. I mean, kind of in the middle of the road coming out, but they were the court behind me as we were calling those matches early in the day. All in, they were all in, and then you look at the end of the weekend, they had if not the best, one of the best weekends. And I think it's because they all bought in. They were all 100% in as a team. And you could tell. And I mean, it makes a difference. I think teams is definitely a direction this sport is going. Yeah. And and the coasters, I thought, were were really bought in. They were um, great on TV. They on, played on, terrible on, when oh there were no gosh. cameras. <laughs> they didn't play yeah. well when there were no they still, cameras. They still escaped. They escaped out of the weekend three and two. So it wasn't it wasn't terrible. <laughs> but but um, yeah, but I, I I just thought that was so much fun to watch and it gives everybody broadcast experience again to your point i mean we're, we're talking some mid-level players who I would mean, never had a chance to be on tv and now they're playing on national tv which is only going to raise their level of game and make them better players I, I just, i'm telling you it's 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 truly great i love Ke it yeah kevin whitaker from the coasters is a pdc guy that they selected yeah. so he's not even technically on our tour level i mean he's he's right there he's a step down but he he gets on national tv and plays his tail off so, I mean, that's it's just awesome exposure for certain players that would probably never get it. Right. All right. We got like 20 seconds left. So, and I want to talk about this more too, but kudos to everyone behind the scenes um, with the TV production and everybody at the ACL, Bernie. Uh, I, I, I truly thought it was a great event and big time shout out to all the players, to everyone who watches this show. Um, well done. Well done. That was an incredible weekend. So enjoyable to watch. And y'all were truly great. And, and that's what we, that's what we talked about. We wanted to see greatness, and it we was. got greatness, Bernie. It yeah. was amazing. It was a great weekend. It was so much fun to be back at a national, wasn't it? It was, yeah, yeah. And to see the first to twenty-one instead of the uh, yeah. the ten it, round it, that was a nice change of pace. So much fun. Yeah, it was good. All right, brother. Good to see you this weekend. That was fast, wasn't it? I know. Yeah, yeah. I'll Maybe see you next week in Topeka, Topeka, heading back to your. You know, oh, you are going stuff. to Topeka. Okay, I'll be good. in Topeka. I did find a flight, by the way, that wasn't that wasn't yeah, ten thousand dollars. I won't be in South Dakota, but I'll be in uh, Topeka, Kansas. Yeah. All right, brother. Uh, Hi, well, I will see you. I'll see you next week, then. Yes, sir. All right, man. Thanks, everybody, for watching. See you.